Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Philip Tenari. I'm the director of the Olin Center for Contemporary Art in Beijing, and I'm hugely honored and um, happy to be here today with Ahmed Mater, uh, arguably the leading artist of his country at the moment, uh, coming from Saudi Arabia. Um, he's generously agreed to share with us uh, some of the elements of his practice, and I thought we could also use this as a chance to um, have something of a discussion about his work, but also kind of about um, art today in Saudi Arabia and, and, and what there is to think about uh, when as we approach this context, which I think is uh, suddenly of quite a lot of interest to so many of us. Um, Ahmed was born in 1979. Uh, coincidentally, we're exactly the same age. Um, uh, in 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 the southern part of Saudi Arabia, far from urban centers, uh, he is now um, living very close to Mecca, which has been the subject of so much of his work. Um, and he's he's shown quite extensively around the world already, including at the Mori in Tokyo, at the Nelson Atkins in Kansas City, um, in last year's Sharjah Biennale, um, elsewhere in Europe, uh, in Beirut. Uh, and with Continua in uh, Le Milan in Paris. Um, he's also uh, spoken uh, and been collected by museums including the British Museum, the V&A, LACMA, uh, the Museum of Islamic Art in Doha, and uh, the Pompidou. So the thing you might not know about him is that he's actually a medical doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that could be a funny That's place, it, an interesting yeah. place to start because I, you might be nearly yeah. unique in that. How did you come uh, from, from being a military doctor to being a contemporary artist? What was that journey uh, like? Yeah, usually this is, uh, uh, it's a nice, yeah, like to say, to start. Uh, actually, it's uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, usually there is no uh, school uh, for art or for uh, uh, college to ca you cannot study art. Uh, medical school also was one of my choice because it was uh, one of things that uh, yeah. But uh, usually I say in uh, medical uh, studies there is uh, s s a lot of similarity to art, and usually I say uh, it's uh, between subjectivity and objectivity. I find medicine and art for me is the right definition. Where is the subjectivity and objectivity can go together? That's amazing. Um, so, and when when did your practice really kind of blossom in full? I mean, from what year would you date yourself as uh, having you know been making art for yeah. that we still see as uh, your art? Actually, when I start uh, uh, my art. Uh, I start with the uh, X-ray, and uh, here is, there is some X-rays. I use the old uh, uh, X-rays in hospital, all the outside of the X-ray, to uh, do art. But usually, I was uh, practicing art because uh, in the area that I am from, there is big respect to art. They do the internal house painting, especially the woman is the work for the woman. My mother was a painter, and said that so. There is a connection to the art from this time, which is very, very important in this uh, time for me. When I go to the medical school, I recognize that I want to go more to think about beyond. I start study medicine, and you know, during medicine, you will ask more about philosophy, about psychiatry, which is very important science, which can overlap with the art in many aspects. So uh, I start with the X-ray, and this, uh, uh, to make a dialogue between two uh, X-ray and this people from the people that I work with them in hospital, some some of them I know and some of them I didn't know, and I put it in the like the illumination, the first page in the opening book, especially in the old uh, ancient uh, holy uh, 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 books, and that uh, was um, uh, at this time good start because uh, uh, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of it was like a provocative a little bit in the country and a lot of uh, interest coming and there is a lot of pro people asking why you do this and how and how the art becoming uh, like this. And it's it's becoming one of the of the things that opened the, the idea for me that we can create the conflict with the art or let's say establish confidence with the art. Um. And that led us to some very key pieces, like the piece with the uh, magnet and the and the filings, uh, yeah. kind of recreating the Kaaba in a, in a way, right? I mean, um, it's it's interesting 
I mean, it's always interesting in these contexts, China included, right, to think about um, to what extent the artist is expected to engage with the national symbols or with the kind of staples of the culture. I mean, do you, did you, have you felt that as a burden or as a resource or I don't know, has uh, it? Yes, you know, usually it's, it's uh, like what, when I say it's, uh, it's matter usually to ask uh, as an artist, it's, uh, it's becoming uh, uh, an idea to think from inside or uh, about the things that uh, evo evoke the cultural around you. And religion was very important. And when I say uh, medical school is very, has very effect in my uh, uh, experience in the art or my practice. So like what I say, it's uh, usually uh, work between subjectivity and objectivity here. And uh, it's like a scientific experiment explaining a lot behind how the people react and how the social fabric coming together to the symbol of the uh, magnet and the cube. And this is how I imagine it. And it was very simple to put the magnet and around it, the iron filing, and then twist it, and with this a twist, it creates all of this kind of uh, uh, of uh, feeling. So it's, I don't know how can I can explain it as uh, physical, because it's an art thing, sometimes it's a, it's a more, but it's a more metaphor about how how I feel, but it's it doesn't mean, I'm, it's also very important because it's explain the, the Mecca without construction, without, uh, it's uh, without, I mean, he, it's a feeling from inside. It's, it's how the people, the humanity react more. Um, and, and what was the leap from here? Because, I mean, so much of your uh, work as we know it now is in the medium of photography. Uh, was that a, um, a conscious choice to, to begin to work with the camera or did it happen? Uh, actually, I learned the photography through the X-ray machine because it's the same exposure and it's the, and uh, I, I start with the landscape photography a uh, long time ago and I was used the infrared uh, film which is more similar to the exposure of the X-ray film as was very successful in black and white for the beginning in the in the medical school as it was one of the practice but in Mecca project I find photography is important medium to let the image explaining and record, help me to record the challenge, what's happening there. So photography here is more than photography for me. It's about image and how, uh, uh, where is the dialogue between the uh, spectator or audiences and the, the image. Mm -hmm. So this is where I find it. I find it very useful. One of your earlier photographic series was called Empty Land. Yes. Empty Land, it's, uh, it's, an, uh, uh, it's an, a project when I uh, try to uh, uh, mapping the... Uh, We're skipping Yellow Cow? With that? No. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we might have to come back. Uh, it's, yeah, it's uh, mapping the... Uh, yeah, here, here's the Empty Land. Uh, empty land, it's trying to map the landscape in Saudi Arabia, and it's uh, called the Empty Land and Seventh Sister. Seventh Sister is a famous uh, novel in the American uh, history about the seven oil, uh, companies, oil companies, distributed in the USA. And uh, during it was very important in the future of uh, uh, economy in the America. The seventh one is called Aramco, which is becoming in Saudi Arabia, the most famous uh, company in Saudi Arabia, which is called Aramco. Aramco is the seventh sister, so I try to make the dialogue here between the seventh sister and the landscape in Saudi Arabia. This landscape in Saudi Arabia has a lot of change after the oil discovering and the oil booming and all of the economy change. And during these things, I try to give a portrait for landscape. It's also contradiction for portrait and landscape. It's the idea of uh, how I imagine. It's more about fictional story that I build, and it's uh, more related to very famous novelists in Saudi Arabia called Abdurrahman Munif. Abdurrahman Munif uh, is uh, one of the most famous novel. His uh, famous uh, right, uh, book is called uh, uh, The City of the Salt. Uh, City of the Salt explaining the landscape in Arabia after uh, oil booming. So during this uh, history and uh, imagination, I try to map landscape with the, with the, 
with the camera and with the aerial uh, photography. So here it's, uh, you can see some, uh, it's more visual essay about what's happening in this time. And are we looking at changes to the landscape that had happened since the discovery of oil or more particularly since the nationalization of Aramco? Or is there a kind uh, of geopolitical history that maps onto this uh, these natural phenomena? I think it's combination between uh, the nationality and the, between the kind of, uh, of the economical uh, forces and regarding to the, uh, the people when they leave their home uh, going to find the jobs in the s main cities that's built after that. So it's uh, it's a uh, it's a work in the store. It's like a s history of the history of the t socio-political uh, uh, story d uh, f uh, before 50 or 60 years in the kingdom. Hmm. Um, and did this lead you towards the? Uh, I mean, the pieces for which we could say you're maybe best known from this series about the called the Desert of Faran. Or is there a direct connection, or is it? Uh, of course, uh, 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 Desert of Faran, or sometimes we called it Artificial Light. Uh, uh, desert of Faran is the name of the uh, Faran is the desert or the wilderness uh, uh, around uh, Hijaz. Hijaz is the Mecca and the Medina and the the city, uh, the 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 all of the cities around Mecca. So yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think it was very important to see how, after the empty land, to see where is the gathering and where is the economy uh, challenge uh, b being there. So uh, to go through empty land, and I called it usually this uh, unofficial histories behind the mass expansion in Mecca, uh, with the with uh, many aspects of how the city react with the new memory of the new generation. Now, it's the was the the research that um. And this is an ongoing series. It seems yeah, like. now it's ongoing series, and it will finish by the ex uh, finishing of the expansion of the of the of this uh, cities. Uh, I mean, the middle of the city or the expansion of the. Uh, of the Haram or the mosque, the Grand Mosque, or the area around the Grand Mosque. So you're really following in, in kind of real time. Yeah, as this it's it's uh, it's becoming like uh, uh, daily following because uh, and even I did uh, from uh, one years I get a leave from uh, medical. Yeah, so I'm, I'm concentrating all of my time just for this research. Um, and. Is this a place to talk about the work that's actually on the booth uh, here? Because it seems it, it's also connected to the same body in a way. Yeah, uh, uh, the work in the booth uh, here is uh, more uh, taking from helicopter uh, by helicopter. I'm trying to take another point of view of the gover uh, of the governmental point of view. Uh, but uh, during this point of view, you will see how uh, with a new eye or outsider eye or insider eye maybe, at the same time, mapping the social uh, fabric of the city, or mapping the uh, uh, urban fabric of the city now. But what they did, they did the more research for the people who come to the uh, Hajj illegally. And you see the, some, uh, uh, some illegal immigrant walking during this uh, photo. Uh, so this is, was, uh, uh, with a new eye uh, to show how the city react with this uh, expansion and how it's, uh, uh, how it's, uh, the new memory will react with the new generation. Yeah. It's more also related to the architect of the cities uh, because the city is, has this kind of direction which is a spiral direction, which is very important. Uh, uh, and the uh, architect to build the city, but because Mecca has this kind of the center, and, and they're usually they think about center. And uh, when you see the city expansion, it uh, has many questions from the uh, place where there's illegal building, or Shante city behind, and you will find here there is many, many uh, aspects of, uh, of the city to talk about. Um, and the, the clock tower appears in so many of your images. I mean, it seems to be uh, another kind of icon that competes with the, the central icon of the city, I guess. It also has this incredible story, I mean, and this yeah. kind of hybrid architectural style. Sometimes when uh, you put uh, something in your image, usually maybe you'll not, it's not becoming iconic, but bec maybe it's becoming like an, 
uh, against <laughs> this uh, yeah this building uh, because yes and and when you are in city you will see it from everywhere in the city but it's also uh, for me it's like becoming like a fake icon yeah because uh, the real icon was the uh, the real house the small house which is the the ancient house of the place uh, uh, i don't know from the architect point of view i didn't uh, as an artist i didn't uh, um, uh, agree with the many things but also uh, it's becoming the questioning for all of my uh, research during this time why it's there <laughs> and well, I mean, because on the booth, there's just one incredible image of taken from a helicopter. Um, and of course, one of the pieces of the backstory here is that this tower was built by the Bin Laden group. Yes. A and on this image, you have actually the time in the helicopter, and it's 8.46 AM, right? Which is, as every American knows, yeah, the yeah. moment <laughs> when the, the plane hit the tower, right? And so uh, it's interesting. I mean, I, you've explained that you were consciously uh, looking to engage with that yeah uh, actually it's uh, it uh, it was uh, like uh, it's a fictional coming to my mind while there work in the helicopter with the military to pilot so i was just taking photograph okay uh, and when i do my research in the home or the, my homework in the photo i find this time and i am aware about this time so i capture this photo which is very important so directly uh, and uh, here we're talking about the facts and fictional more. Yeah. It's coming to my mind uh, the idea of uh, of uh, changing the something happening or I don't know how can but it's more about visual essay because this is also like what you say is a build by Bin Laden and we know something and the time and the two pilot and military you know so it's you are in front of many characters. It's like you are in the f scene of film and sure. things. And this is make a lot of a statement, big statement in the, in the history of the, uh, between the two parts of the world. So this is why I start uh, building this kind of a story. Um, you said something amazing. Um, I guess one thing we could mention here is that you have an ongoing uh, email correspondence with the Chinese artist Ai Weiwei. Uh, yeah, and uh, Skype. And Skype. <laughs> yeah, so we Skype. We uh, he he's amazing. Yeah, uh, I like. Uh, I introduced to him. By, uh, thanks for Chris Dercon. Uh, he was visiting uh, the uh, the director of the tape. When he visited Saudi Arabia and he visited me in South, and uh, he saw because we are more on the activist side in the country in the South, and we usually do like. Uh, secret cinema because you know it's right, not allowed. This red wax. Group yeah, was yeah. Right of, uh, and it's not allowed for cinema and so there. So we did like a very real secret cinema. So we, no one can know the place, but the people, the fan, they can follow it and save it. Uh, yeah, when we spoke with the IWA, we I spoke with him mostly about his three book, because he did fantastic three books, which is he sent the artists to do something what they want just to write. The, the white and the gray and the black work. So I like the idea. So I spoke with him about the possibility to, to combi you know, to have something there. And because a lot of artists in Saudi Arabia they like Ai Weiwei because the, fa you know, because they read about him. But what I like more about Ai Weiwei when when we was talking, he had his uh, iPad and just go around <laughs> and this we feel like it's an, <laughs> yeah it's 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 uh, it was an important uh, uh it's important dialogue because it will um, you know inspire a lot of uh, yeah um wow is i mean is it a good moment to ask a little bit about you know what is what is the art scene like in in saudi right now um, I think I can. Uh, I I would love to explain the art in Saudi Arabia. It's a kind of emerging movement, uh, like any place uh, or any. Uh, uh, I think it's the time in Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, and the artists in Saudi Arabia or uh, 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 the people who relate to culture to think more about the art is not the place for. Uh, uh, it's the art is usually uh, not for compromise. Art is the place for establish uh, confidence or conflict. 
I think the art should be more confident in this time because uh, art is not about uh, compromise any more. I think this is the time in Saudi Arabia now. It's becoming more clear, art becoming more to establish confident and have a voice. I mean, in a place where the institutions for contemporary art are kind of still uh, being formed, right? How does that affect the way you think about uh, the audience for your work? Uh, I think uh, in Saudi Arabia, it's very uh, there is very limitation to the uh, art institute. It's uh, I mean maybe there is no art institute uh, in Saudi Arabia. But what I believe by I believe by the small groups, and so because it's not more about the physical space anymore. And 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 the, and the new time, I think, or this time, uh, I think the small groups make very important uh, movement for in the kingdom. And uh, we saw the first. Uh, if I told you this, the, this year uh, in Saudi Arabia was the first film by a Saudi woman uh, called Wajda becoming uh, internationally sure. seen, which is very important. And there is no cinema school. There is no way to shoot. And she did all of that with the, a lot of help from insiders, you know? So imagine this is was uh, another starting. Uh, YouTube uh, activist, a lot in Saudi Arabia now. A comedian is very important movement for the comedian in Saudi Arabia because comedy is very interesting way to criticize <laughs> the nice way, so no one can, and it's it's remind me by the famous film in the name of the rose, which is was uh, t talking about the comedian when they, when they in the Christianity where this comedian was overcome to the, uh, you know, uh, against the big religion leaders of this time, and I think we are not far from this time in the comedian in Saudi Arabia. This is maybe similar. Is there a sense of uh, topics that cannot be explored or that would be dangerous to explore? Yeah, of course. There is many, but it's depending about how you will understand the red line and to push it outside rather than to cross. Like Wajda film. Uh, Wajda is it's refused to showing in Saudi Arabia, but and somehow they, she can she shot all of the scenes inside Saudi Arabia. So it's depending. It's it's a long story to understand because. Uh, it's need to understand the real local, how the people will react, the religious uh, power and the political power. It's very complicated uh, uh, cultural scene. And you're and you're very much part of it. I mean, you you have around you a group of artists. Uh, otherwise, we like yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is this is the best the, the most interesting things when you have a, a group of artists and a group of intellectuals around you. There there is a real movement. Can yeah. Where where do you see things heading? Uh, future is. Uh, uh, I think uh, we are. Uh, and I think things going in the uh, the art scene will be very strong and will be very important. Uh, and the literature is very important. But I don't know on the other side of political and economy. It's yeah. This is this is a very interesting project. This is 100 found objects, right? Yeah. Which you were, um, which I guess was curated uh, by by Hor Al Kasimi and the yeah. Sharjah Art Foundation yes. a, a few years ago. Um, it seems to me like a, another step forward in in your practice. Yeah, a uh, hundred found object. It's a hundred uh, 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 stories from Mecca, in this time. But it's also reflect to Saudi Arabia the social and uh, uh, political important movement of the city. Uh, and uh, uh, for example, this is a weasel from the. Uh, Ottoman era, which we find it uh, there uh, during my research. For example, this is a, a very important middle for military during the, when the very extremist group called Juhayman, uh, uh, they, uh, uh, Mecca was under the siege in this time. Uh, very important. Uh, but what is important really is uh, this. Uh, uh, can you imagine Zuha Hadid doing uh, Mecca? <laughs> <laughs> so this is also one of the things that the like a city uh, in the Gulf and uh, many cities in the world, you know, the star of architect becoming invited to make a new plan and this uh, 
imaginable cities, or if I can, the city, Ethiopian architect. And uh, I find this book, which is very interesting, and uh, uh, it's very famous. Uh, one of them is the Zaha Hadid, uh, Santiago Calterava, um, Tadao Andu, many of uh, architects. And everyone put his imagination, and uh, for me it was, uh, was important to show it in the exhibition because uh, it's reflect, uh, I don't know if, I'm sure that no one of them come to Mecca to see uh, <laughs> before the, uh, you know, they did this. Uh, so, yeah, so this was one of the things that I'm trying to discuss with the, where is the architect can meet the needs of the people or the need of the, of the visual pleasure. And with this project, you were really cataloging these different objects and trying to kind of create uh, Yes, uh, it's a uh, thanks for uh, Sharjah Art Foundation to support this uh, uh, project. Uh, there is a book coming uh, uh, about this 100 found objects and it show 100 stories. Uh, we make it like a novel, uh, so every object spoke from uh, himself. So you will find like whistle spoking. So you read story uh, by the whistle. During this hundred uh, story, you will understand the full uh, uh, narrative about history of uh, the city, which is uh, safe from the political side, you know. Do you understand uh, it to be part of your role as an artist to educate people about where you come from, or do you, do you feel that, that as a kind of unfair expectation that gets placed on your work to have to do some of that explanatory expository uh, I think it's more related to global globalization of the artwork but sometimes you are right uh, it's depending because when you work in the local context sometimes it's need a lot of information so it's need explanation but at the same times I think it's uh, uh, it's a still a matter of question uh, even from me to what I'm doing yeah what's what excites you right now? I mean, what are the... Uh, uh, in many aspects, uh, I think uh, sounds and music here in this area because uh, uh, I'm trying to work in the, in the sounds that's... Uh, because uh, in the area where also the, you know, the music is uh, forbidden in, in the history of this area, but what I find, it's rich of the uh, music and the sounds and the melodies from this area. So I'm trying to now to work in uh, understanding how music help the life and the life helping the music in this place. Sounds and the music, it's very exciting. Wow. And I was just reading a text you wrote, uh, you you published this manifesto in, in 2012 yeah. uh, in, in Art Asia Pacific, and you said something to the effect of, um, we've decided to return to the source and foundation for inspiration, our, namely our role in this society. T yes. In instinctively doing this, we were unconsciously reacting against the pressures of the growing Middle Eastern art market uh, with its desire to develop the art scene for commercial reasons, treating yes. our practices as a commodity, and our languages and aesthetics being transformed into identifiable and inflexible brands. Right, yeah. Uh, it was manifesto. I was very angry in this time. <laughs> I wrote this because... We don't have to get into the specifics. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. We're on. I know we're on. Uh, it's actually, it's very important because like an emerging scene, uh, the commercial uh, commerciality of... Uh, I don't know what I can call it, but it can kill the scenes. and. Uh, uh, I like when you say I, uh, the first group in China that's uh, since uh, the, uh, they starting before the uh, Sachi do the exhibition of China arts. I think it was and somehow similar to this uh, thoughts. So uh, group in Saudi Arabia and literature and it's uh, twisted in the for me in the wrong direction because the commercial reason trying to to find what can fit with their uh, reason. So we did this uh, manifesto in the south and uh, inside Saudi Arabia because in the Middle Eastern art, uh, the market is becoming 
a little bit disaster. I can. This is the truth, because it's more about decoration. It's uh, outside of uh, uh, intellectual. Is really uh, in the side or politician or activists is usually uh, uh, ignored. Yeah. And it's uh, behind many stories here. So this I write the manifest too, and it's it's uh, uh, it was very uh, it's taken a lot by my friends and everyone was read it in this time in this uh, kingdom. <laughs> yeah, and the Facebook was. So you do feel a deep sense of uh, social commitment and responsibility. I think then. I think artist has this rule to the social commitment. Yeah, otherwise arts intellectuals, artists, and uh, in some way, I think it's very important uh, rule. Yeah, uh, it's not uh, uh, mandatory, but it's very important because artist uh, for me is more uh, to. Uh, uh, like when I say usually, uh, some artists say, I don't care about audience uh, and they couldn't about the set, I'm doing my artwork, and that's it. For me, I think, uh, uh, no, it should be, audience is usually above or spectator. Yeah, very important because it's, they are part of the, your uh, practices. And that, that actually probably connects to the, one of your most recent pieces, which was the... Um Fall as leaves. It was the, the piece yeah. you made actually from collecting some footage, I think, right? I mean yeah, this is, was a, a film that uh, showing in the Berlin Film Festival. Uh, it's a mobile footage uh, collected from the worker in Mecca, and uh, uh, I collect all of the by Bluetooth, exchanging with the uh, with the worker by Bluetooth, and. Uh, by all of the uh, and all of these films done by the worker for their uh, memory or for the back to home or sending to their families and we did a film with this uh, footage which is was very very interesting showing the their memory their life and i didn't i didn't photograph or uh, film any of them it just exchange to see how they re recording their memory by themselves and it was very successful uh, uh, some of them uh, give a, uh, allow me to show, and some of them say you can't show it without mentioning my name, and some of them they say no, you cannot show my uh, thing. So we make it like we collect what we can do, and we show it to you. Fantastic. Are there other pieces that we should uh, quickly uh, check before we? Maybe evolution of man, just to show it one times and. I think this is very important uh, statement in this time, starting of Saudi art. Yeah, evolution of man, maybe. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I think that's... Not minting words. Yeah, that's interesting statement to show things about the movement and, yeah. Fantastic. Are there questions from the audience? Anyone who'd like to raise anything? Yes. So here it comes. Um, thank you. Hi, Ahmed. Um, I was just wondering, um, what's been the reaction to you from Saudi authorities? And the second part of the question was that um, I was interested in what you were saying about your manifesto and about being branded. And I just wondered whether being sort of part of Edge of Arabia effectively sort of plays into that branding. Like, do you unwittingly become part of the process? Uh, uh, for... Uh, uh Yes, for the qu uh, first uh, question, uh, uh, I think it's depending on, I'm doing more in the research about the uh, context around me and uh, how I feel and how I will react. I didn't have any things uh, to authorities or something. Uh, so it's more about, uh, uh, I'm, I'm more fascinating about to understand about the architect and the urban fabric. Uh, changing in Saudi Arabia because it's an emerging city, it's an emerging scene. It has a lot of important history, but what's happening now make a lot of challenge happening. And uh, is this a challenge make a lot of sense or not? So it's more on this side. Uh, for the second question, uh, I'm talking in this manifesto about the Middle Eastern market as 
all from my understanding on this team. Uh, in this manifesto, I'm doing another one now, which is multi-layer, more important, because this was uh, more from the heart uh, against uh, this kind of uh, movement as a, for me and for many friends around. It was talking about what we are, f uh, what we feel in this time. So it's not uh, related to Edge of Arabia, or it's more, uh, it's more uh, related to Middle Eastern market at this time. Edge of Arabia has maybe some role in this. I'm from UAE. I wanted to ask you, you used to do a, a lot of calligraphy. Why you, we don't see that today, or are you continuing it or not? Uh, for calligraphy, uh, 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 I study, uh, uh, I read about calligraphy, and I did in Sharjah, one of biennials in calligraphy, but uh, more I use calligraphy in my artwork sometimes in the, when I start uh, paint in my painting, uh, in the old painting. But uh, because uh, my mission is uh, more uh, different, I am not calligrapher by myself, I'm not a good calligrapher, by the way. But I'm trying, you know, I'm very interested to read or know about photography. Thank you. Hello. Um, I was wondering if you could speak a bit about the title of this talk, which is Violent Changes, Facts and Fictions, and w what exactly were we, you know, what, what were we thinking of with that yes. title? Yes, uh, actually, uh, about when I talk about uh, the city and how i trying to imagine, uh, it's like, uh, uh, it's very important because when I start with this talk, I start to say, uh, uh, it's about, uh, let's talk about the difference between subjectivity and objectivity. And it's the same time for my approach here in many of my artwork about the uh, uh, facts and the fictional uh, story. So much of the artwork and the way of approach is regarding uh, and this. For example, the fast change in the scale in the Mecca in the destruction of the cities, uh, the way of the changing of the emerging, uh, uh, like the manifesto of the emerging uh, art scene and what's happening. Uh, uh, from uh, aspect also, uh, like the photo that's in front of us now. <laughs> so, yeah, from this aspect of... Uh, Uh, Ahmed, just a quick question about uh, when you create the artwork, as you're actually going through the process of creation, who is the audience that you're trying to communicate with? So who do you actually have in, have in mind when you're creating these pieces? Who, who is the main audience that you're trying to dialogue with? Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, usually I, uh, I like to talk about audiences. <laughs> Uh, actually, when I think about uh, audiences, uh, I usually have this, uh, this mind of uh, this triangle. Um, uh, if I can say audiences above, art and artists is here, and uh, public body or the political or uh, 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 foundation, any public body, I mean by public body, the politician or any effects. So usually for me is the art and artist, public body, the audience is above. So without audiences, you know, for me it's one of the triangles is lost. But, and sometimes you will find the triangle is flip this side or this side. When the public body becoming a politician, so art and artist down and uh, 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 and uh, the audiences is down, with supposed, which is not a bad idea, because when the art and the artists work with the audiences, it's fantastic. I think in Europe, I find usually the public, the audiences above, which is sometimes out of the context, and the public body and the uh, art and artists is near to each other. Sometimes you see artwork which is very abstract outside of the, and the same, and, uh, uh, and same time, uh, art should be have this sense of the globalization. So it's uh, like an equation to, I don't know if I explain it very well or make it more confusing, but it's kind of this uh, uh, understanding. Audiences is very important, and I think without audiences, 
there is no interaction in the art that I'm doing, at least. I think we have time for just one or two more questions, but I, s I see one there. Hi. Um, um, first of all, I, I just have to acknowledge the fact that um, having um, an Arab artist from Saudi Arabia in Hong Kong, um, that already indicates a tremendous shift and change in um, the international art scene um, itself because you know uh, even five years ago uh, placing a Middle Eastern artist in the context of China or in, in juxtaposition was um, almost shocking um, even mentioning it was like what that's way way too they're two different worlds don't even try to connect them in any way so for me I think the fact that this this so this talk is even happening today in Hong Kong with you is um, a tremendous shift um, in how um, we are beginning to look at the world in, a, in its worldly fashion. Um, but I guess the question I, I had for you was um, besides the um, intellectual um, sort of vitality that maybe you are um, uh, contributing um, are there any other practical initiatives that you are involved in, um, in, in the sense of maybe um, helping initiate an institution or smaller um, institutions um, similar to maybe what Wa'il Shawki was doing in Egypt? Uh, and if there's um, actual uh, support for, for that um, from the official um, uh, arenas. Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, actually, yes, uh, uh, what um, uh, now we are uh, uh, building like uh, small groups. Now we are building a studio in Jeddah. And thank you for uh, 2139. Uh, it's a uh, very important initiative in Jeddah, supporting the art in Saudi Arabia. And for other gallery, they support this. It's like a small studio. It's like a think tank or uh, uh, kind of organics, intellectuals or alternative space for learning. So we have this studio now, and it's open for anyone, especially student in Saudi Arabia or artist. And we are uh, do screening from time to time. Uh, we have library, small library, which is now we are building this library. We have a small archive of uh, films. Uh, and uh, uh, we're trying to make s some initiatives, which I hope it will become bigger. I like the Wa'il Shawqi initiative in Egypt, and I know Wa'il Shawqi, uh, what he did is fantastic and amazing. And uh, what we now uh, doing is, uh, it's a different, but it's more, more open. It's not an institutional, it's not, it's a group. It's like a house. It's like, uh, we called it majlis in Saudi Arabia, which is where we people sitting to each other. So I hope it, uh, this is the, the things that I'm, we are doing now. Thank Great. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing so much about your practice with us. Um, not by way of plug, but just, you know, you might be curious to actually see some of Ahmed's work in the flesh, which you can do upstairs. I think it's 3D11. Is that the booth number in the in the um, insight section on the yeah. third level? Um, thank you for coming. And uh, we look forward to seeing how your how your art continues to emerge and grow in these coming years. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you.